having an open mind is extremely important. My mind was so closed at that time so that the ideas I was hearing and learning about actually propelled forward my work, my experience, and connected to people in the community of my background and whether we are Asian or black or Chicana or native white or Jewish or lesbians or sisters with disabilities, we were all together because be then, because with the power of the social community, we could understand, and you know what, nothing truly is personal. And that's really hard for me to say because I thought, oh, if I just lift myself up my bootstraps or take off my bra, I might be all right, right? So that isn't the case, but I wanted to share a poem by Karen Brodeen, who was a leader in Radical Women, and she was a worker poet, a fighter, a woman of tremendous power, and who really helped many of us find uh, what we needed to do. And Karen wrote this poem from her book, Women Sitting at the Machine Thinking. When she sits at the machine, rays from the cathode stream directly into her chest. When she worked as a clerk, the rays from the Xerox angled upward, strike her under the chin. When she waited tables, the micro ovens at stomach level. When she typeset for Safeway, dipping her hands in processor chemical, chemicals. Her an, hands burned and peeled and her chest ate from the fumes. Well, we know what makes everything we use or can't use as the world piles itself up the bones of the years. So our labor gathers while we sell ourselves in fractions. They don't want us all at once, but hour by hour, piece by piece our hands mainly and our backs and chunks of our brains and veiled expressions on our faces they buy, though they don't know what actual thoughts stand behind our eyes. Then they toss the body out on the sidewalk at noon and at five. Then they spit the body out the door at 65. Indeed, this worker poet's voices voice rises not from any ivory tower, but deep from the workplace and from the real experience of most women, poor and working class. Karen urged me to write about work. I asked her why. I said, it's pretty boring. She said, uh -uh, because it's about our lives. And when what I once thought was personal, having to work as a secretary to make a living until I got married, transformed my life's work as a feminist toward being a socialist feminist revolutionary. The movements and triumphs of women workers the world over are many. But in a sexual, sexist world dominated by the ruling class and a patriarchal global economic system hell-bent on for insatiable profits affect our very lives inside the home, the workplace, in our communities. But women survive, women organize, women fight back, and women lead. Women textile workers started the 1917 Russian Revolution. Chinese and Vietnamese women fought in the revolutions of their countries. Women fought alongside men in the Cuban Revolution. Mexicanos show their valor in the Mexican Revolution of 1910. African women marched and died to end apartheid. Palestinian and Jewish women demand an end to the occupation of Palestine. Women of Iraq fight against Islamic Sharia law that demand their obedience without question and for the separation of church and state in Kurdistan. In India, indigenous women, uh, Plachimada, organize sit-ins outside the factory gates of Coca-Cola to protest the groundwater being heavily depleted. Union women right here in San Francisco fight for their rights for a living wage as janitors. These are only a few examples of women's leadership in the cause of women's rights against misogyny, sexual violence, economic deprivation, an eternal war, and for environmental safety, food, education, sustenance, beauty, and human creativity. And our sisters all over the globe need our help 
and solidarity because an injury to one is an injury to all. We are of the working class, and we are damn proud of it. Working class has been made into a dirty word by the powers that be that try to lull us where there's only, you know, two. there's there's a middle class. Yes, I know, realize the middle class are suffering from this um, crisis that we're having now in the United States, but we really only have a working class and a ruling class. I mean, I, I, I live... I live in a home with my comrades, and I couldn't do it if I didn't have my comrades and my sisters and a brother to live with me in a house. And if I didn't live uh, together with them, I'd be renting a room in some house maybe in, I don't know, um, Pittsburgh. And that's not to knock Pittsburgh, California either. But San Francisco is mighty expensive as it is in many major cities. So we're working, women and men will have to pay and pay and pay for the greed and malfeasance of bankers, politicians, and crooks inherit in the vicious system of capital. Immigrant women, defiant and not defeated, sneaking across the border, coming in rickety boats across the water, beaten, bitten by rats, violated by coyotes, snakeheads, and unscrupulous profiteers. Immigrant women from Mexico, El Salvador, Honduras, women from China and Thailand, women from Russia and Bosnia, women from Haiti, the Philippines, women from Iraq, from India, Pakistan, you name it. They're here, they're in Germany, they're in Indonesia, they're in Canada, they're in Algeria. Call it courage, call it survival, call it material. But when our economy, the global economy, is downward spiral, spiraling, Immigrant workers are scapegoated. Their labor is exploited, and the clothes that we wear on our backs and the fruits and vegetables that we eat would be impossible without immigrant labor, without our labor. Their tasks involve consistent leadership and heroism. So at a time when media is focused on women who represent the U.S. working class, we need to focus on why immigrant women, especially those of color, will risk life and limb to survive. Corporations go global to exploit the cheap labor of working people, yet workers from other countries who come here to the U.S. are supposedly stealing American jobs and causing the economy to sink. We know that this economy could not survive without immigrant labor, without our labor of our hands, our bodies, and of our minds. Workers themselves are not to be blamed for the economy's ills when our government fights the war on terror in Afghanistan and in Iraq. We realize that electing women, either from the Democratic or Republican parties, do not offer us any solutions to the issues of women and children or to men or to queers. Right-wing forces from the Minutemen to the Traditional Values Coalition support building offenses along our borders and ICE, everybody knows that means Immigration and Customs Enforcement, raid factories and plans seeking and deporting undocumented workers, separating families, and terrorizing communities of color. Neither party of continuing war via a gentler, kinder kind of capitalism will free all women, workers, and the poor. Our homes will still be foreclosed. I don't care how they corrupt this $700 billion bailout that they're blasting on the TV waves in the last day. Our health care will be more and more our personal responsibility. Homeless will still be on the streets. Wages will still be low. And women will still bear the burden of balancing it all, striving to be superwomen and then beck and call of the ruling class. And young women will still be told to abstain from sex or be forced into heterosexual nuclear family marriage. 